Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have a very fun problem for you guys today. Uh, this one is from the IMO shortlist in 2003. Um, it's problem number four and it involves only circles in the initial problem statement. And then you have to show a bunch of relationships between uh, the lengths. So if you want to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. All right, so now I'm going to go over the solution. Uh, so we have four different circles. Uh, gamma 1, Gamma 2, Gamma 3, and Gamma 4. Um, gamma 1 and Gamma 3 are tangent externally at point P. And the same thing is true with Gamma 2 and Gamma 4. Um, and we want to show... So, so first of all, um, if we take the pairwise intersection points of the circles, it's A, B, C, and D. Uh, this is F for now, but I'm going to change it to D. It's a little typo. Um, and we want to show that AB times BC over AD times DC is PB squared over PD squared. So I've been mentioning for a while that I was going to do a video involving inversion. And you guessed it right, that's uh, this video. Um, so there's a whole bunch of circles and inversion turns circles into lines, which are generally easier. Um, and so I'm going to try to tackle this using inversion. Um, so we're trying to prove sort of an algebraic statement, so there's going to be a lot of algebra in this proof. And I usually don't do problems that involve a lot of algebra, but I felt like this would be a good one um, to post because uh, if you're just starting out with inversion like I am, um, the solution is not that hard um, if, you, if you know um, the basics of inversion. All right, so I'm going to go through it. So we're going to start by inverting the entire diagram across point P. Um, and we're going to invert across an, a circle with an arbit arbitrary radius R. So I'm going to draw that uh, arbitrary circle centered at P. Um, it doesn't matter what the radius is. The proof still holds in every case. Um, so how do I, what does it mean to invert the whole diagram across the circle? Basically, it means that for every point, um, whatever distance it currently is to point P, I'm going to map it to another point such that when you multiply the old distance to point P times the new distance, it's equal to the radius of this circle squared. So I'm going to call the radius of the circle R. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to... So, so for example... Um, Point F, or it will, I'm going to change it to point D later. But point, point D lies outside of this circle. And so the inverse of it would lie inside the circle, also on the line PD, at a, at a point D prime, so that when you take PD prime times PD, you would get the, this radius squared. Um, and the same is true with um, A, for example. Um, a would be mapped to point A prime outside of the circle, so that PA times PA prime is the radius squared, and A prime lies on PA. Um, and, th and that's true with every single point in the figure. So question is, what is this circle mapped to? Um, the circle through PD and I A. Uh, and it turns out this is sort of a fundamental property of inversion that I'm not going to prove here. But if you try to invert the circle, um, it's going to invert uh, to a line um, that passes through A prime and F prime. Um, and that line should be uh, parallel to the, the tangent at P. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write some of this out. Um, but actually, before I write it out, I'm going to draw... Um, the inverses of A, B, C, and D. So a lot of drawing here, but it gets us what we want. Um, and I'm going to relabel a few points. Okay, so A prime is the inverse of A, B prime is the inverse of B, and so on. Um, and I'm going to connect all the prime points. So the circle through P, A, and D, if we invert it um, through um, the circle centered at P, 
it, it ends up being the line a prime d prime so not just the segment a prime d prime but if you extended the line on forever um, the inverses of all those points would be exactly um, that circle passing through p i guess technically you could say the point p goes to the point at infinity so maybe depending on what but that's sort of just a technicality um, other than P, every point on the circle gets mapped to um, a point on the line A prime D prime and vice versa. And A prime D prime has to be uh, parallel to the tangent line to the circle through P, A, and D. It has to be tangent, uh, I'm sorry, A prime D prime has to be parallel to the, the tangent line at P to that circle. Okay, so I'm gonna, now I'm going to start writing some of it out. Um, okay, so we're inverting a diagram through a circle with center P and arbitrary radius R. Uh, gamma 1, like I mentioned, that inverts to the line A prime B prime, and that's parallel to the line uh, that's tangent to gamma 1 at point P. But the line tangent to gamma 1 at point P is the same as the line tangent to gamma 3 at point P. Because in the problem statement we said gamma 1 and gamma 3 are externally tangent at p. Okay. So I just wrote out the same thing here. Um, but basically that means that since a prime d prime and b prime c prime are both parallel to that same line, they have to be parallel to each other. Um, so a prime d prime is parallel to b prime c prime. And by the same logic we have uh, a prime b prime is parallel to b prime c prime and so therefore a prime b prime c prime d prime is a parallelogram and so the opposite sides have to be equal okay so the next thing i'm going to do is there's actually a formula for the distance between um two in, two inverse points so you can, there's a formula for A prime B prime in terms of A, B, and some people who have done inversion a lot just memorize this formula, but I'm actually going to prove it out here. Um, I think instead of A prime B prime, I'm going to use A prime D prime just for the example. Um, so first of all, I'm going to write out a few facts. So by the definition of inversion, uh, P A times P A prime is P D times P D prime, uh, that's the definition of the inverse points, and, and those are equal to the radius squared. Um, and so we can convert this into a couple ratios. Um, so this, this means that P A over P D prime has to be P D over uh, P A prime. And so from there we can get similar triangles because um, Triangles PAD and PA prime uh, D prime, uh, they both share uh, the same angle here. So if the ratios of the sides surrounding the angle are the same in both cases, then we have that triangle PAD is similar to triangle PA prime D prime. And so from this similarity, we can actually get a third ratio that's equal to both these two um, because in these two triangles, a d and a prime d prime are corresponding so we get a d over a prime d prime uh, is equal to p a over p d prime um, and we can find this value p a over p d prime uh, using this equation if you take this equation um, and you divide this side by p a prime p d prime uh, this would be r squared over p a p d prime and so we have this equality on the right side. Um, and so just moving a prime d prime over, uh, we have a d is equal to a prime d prime times r squared over p a prime times p d prime. So people who use inversion a lot will just sort of recognize this formula, but I just proved it out for you. And you can do the same for all um, four of these lengths. Um, you can come up with similar expressions, which I mentioned. And so if you combine all four similar expressions and plug it into this equation, 
uh, and you work out the algebra, you get this. Um, so this, this left-hand side of this equation right here, it's equal to PD prime squared over PB prime squared times uh, a ratio involving these four quantities. But we said above here that A prime B prime is equal to D prime C prime, so those two cancel. And then similarly, these two cancel. Um, looks like this prime should have on the end. <laughs> but these cancel and these cancel, so we're just left with... Uh, PD prime squared over PB prime squared. And now uh, we can leverage um, a certain fact. So since PD times PD prime is equal to R squared, um, if you sort of square both sides of the equation, uh, you would get PD squared times PD prime squared is equal to the R to the fourth. So PD prime squared has to be R to the fourth over PD squared. So this says R squared, but really it should be R to the fourth. Um, so I'm gonna fix that right now just for the heck of it. Um, and then uh, if you simplify that right side, uh, you simply get PB squared over PD squared. And that's exactly what we want to show. Um, so like I mentioned, this problem, if you know inversion, uh, it's not very difficult. Um, so I'm actually kind of surprised it was an IMO shortlist problem, um, because if you have that technique, it's pretty standard. But it's, I figured it's a good starting out problem. Um, so hopefully in the future, I'll post more problems involving inversion. Uh, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thanks, everyone.